Good morning, everyone. So today we are here to discuss about uh, how to plan a startup, its legal and ethical steps. So I hope this will be a great helpful for you in future. So the presentation will first start by our uh, faculty member, uh, Jennifer Ma'am. Ma'am, please. How to plan? Uh, how to plan or plan for a startup? So currently India is a very hub for booming startup. So you can see that India is coming up with a lot of startups nowadays. So how? So let's know that how can we actually start or plan for a startup? So first and foremost, what we need is an idea. So like the idea, idea has has spoken for an idea can change the world. So after that idea, we have to have a business plan. Then no business can fund actually without any kind of funding. So if you're looking for funding, then we have to look for investors. After that, investors is come up of location because without location, we cannot sell our business. Thirdly, we have a market plan that is whatever startup we have, if it is not success, to make a startup successful, we have to actually look for a market plan because it's the market that we have to enter, then only our startup can flourish, right? So second, we have build a customer plan and third is plan to change. Plan to change is like a startup can survive only when it is actually looking for adaptability. Now, every startup, be it mobile phones, be it any kind of product, has to change with uh, change with time. Like how to change with time, it will be looked after by how trending the current scenario of the market it is. Second, we have, yeah. To start with a great idea, so first and foremost, we have to start with a great idea, any kind of idea. The first step in learning is how to start a business is to identify a problem in the solution. Now, if you have an idea, for example, if you have an idea for water purifier, now in this current scenario, we have a water scarcity problem everywhere. So if you don't have, don't have a water purifier, now this water purifier can be only access to people who are having a very upper, uh, lower, more than lower middle class family. But what about those people who are actually living in poverty? So that's why we can come up with, for example, we can come up with idea which will have a water purifier and its solution is a very really low cost. So first we need to identify the problem. That is what are the problems which are missing in the market and what are the solutions towards it. So this is because successful startups begin from business idea that fill the needs of a group of customers. So how do you say that an idea can change the world? It's the idea student. But your idea does not always have to be a new one. You can update existing product or services in a way that's better for them. So one of the most famous example is your uh, Apple. So we all know that Steve Jobs has started this idea based on. <clears throat> so we all know that Steve Jobs has actually started this idea on a based on garage. Uh, if you have all seen the uh, Steve Jobs movie. So his original idea was actually for a computer and hence created enhanced uh, versions that better fit the market. They've also continued to evolve new products like iPhone and iPad, making them more useful with each update. 
One example is how they're adding a keyboard for iPad. That will make them easier to use like a laptop. All these innovations by Apple had led them to being worth of over a billion dollars. Now, one of the most fascinating thing about the iPad is you see this can be simple as we can entire simplify this as finding a new use for a product that customers already love. Now, adding a new feature. Now, Apple has actually done an excellent job in adding a new feature every time. Because every time you see a phone comes up, be it iPhone 1 and be it iPhone 2, this is going to increase the number of customers. That is an updated version. And people who are having, you know, iPhones, they are going for iPhone 2 or iPhone 3 and so on. Always they are looking for an updated version. Why they are looking for an updated version? Because adding a new feature. Now this is actually a, a crowd catcher and a crowd puller uh, rule they are being used. So that is why now you see a people who are having iPhone 1, they want to go to iPhone 2 or they want to go to iPhone 3. Why? Because every time iPhone actually comes up with adding a new feature. Now we have changing the product experience, which actually uh, influence the market a lot. For example, if you talk about Samsung right now, currently we have seen the flip flop phones, which were actually 10 years, 12 years back. So Motorola was having flip flop phones. Now in the current market, although the price is too high, but people are going for changing the product experience. You see, it's a way for attracting the customer because now, if you see by the statistics, Samsung, the new flip flop phone of Samsung is going in a very selling in a very high way because suddenly the flip flop comes have also come into existence because people love change. People don't like to use the same product again and again with the same reference. Why? Because human tendency is that we cannot, uh, uh, because it's our human tendency that we are going to get bored with the same kind of same kind of cloth wearing every day. It becomes a headache for people. So that is why in order to remain consistent in any kind of startup that we are having, we need to have specially any one new feature because people are going to go for a new feature. For example, once in a time, uh, Oppo came up with pop-up cameras, right? So they have a new, new feature. So the pop-up camera that was used in Oppo F series, it was a huge hit. Why? Because suddenly pop-up, it seems very exciting to the people. So, second, we have changing the product's appearance. In order to remain in the game, you have to change the product's appearance from time to time. Otherwise, people are going to get bored, right? Second, we have is make a business plan. Now, we can have an idea, but how do we actually uh, accelerate that idea if we don't have a proper business plan? It will be futile if you don't have a current systematic because, for example, lots of people, we all have idea, right? We all have different kinds of idea. I bet even now studying engineering, we are going to have different kinds of ideas here, uh, which we make with our friends. But how to uh, make this idea come into true without having a proper business plan? So second thing which we need in order to plan for a startup is a business plan. Now, once you have an idea, you want to start building a business plan that describes your products and services in detail. It should include information on your industry, operation, finances, and a market analysis. Now, you see, operation is very important because you see, the aim of uh, the aim of that is Tata's Nano was that they wanted to make a car that is which is actually available to all kinds of people, that is a lower middle class people. So the main aim of Nano was to hit the market of lower middle class people so that in India, every family has the luxury of at least driving a car, their own car. But what happened is that they have to change the factory that they have set up. Due to some issues, the entire factory has to set up from one place to another place. So what happened, this actually, uh, rise the price of Nano to, towards a lot, which was not the intention initially. Because of the operation plan was not laid out properly. That is why Nano was a big failure in the market. Why? Because of the operation. Because the operation was not set up. Entire factory, the big dollar lay crore factory, they have to shift from one place to another place. When they shifted their entire factory, what happened? The cost increases to a great height. And as a result, the product that was launched Nano was actually targeted for lower audience, but it came higher. 
Writing a business plan is also important for getting financing for your startup. Banks are more likely to give loans to companies that can clearly explain how they are going to use the money and why they need it. Now, if without finance, I don't think any startup can survive. So first thing, first most of what we need in a startup, rather than other is finance. Because most of the startups are going to fail if you don't have a certain kind of finance person. Second, we have secure funding for your startup. Now for everything, even if you are saving money or even if you are buying food, even if you are aiming for buying a car, what we need is we need this finance and funding. Now without funding, no institution can run and without funding, even your startup is going to be paid. So the cost of startup is different for every business owner. However, no matter where your cost are, you are likely to get startup financing from friends and family. Most startups are being uh, started by country people. So that means we can finance ourselves from friends or family. Second, we have angel investors. Now, in case of uh, venture capitalists and bank loans, so the bank are giving a huge amount of money or huge amount of loans so that we can find a startup. So we can actually, uh, if we have an idea, we can implement it. But for implementing to most of the business talk, why? Because the only thing is money. We are not being able to go forward because of the lack of capital investment. Now, if you don't get the right amount of money or can't raise money for your business, you will risk just like I have told already that if you don't have any kind of money, that means if you don't have been able, uh, able to pay your operating costs, we have hired a factory, right? All these factories will cost up a lack of money. Now, if we don't even have the money to operate our factory where our item will be generated from, then it is going to be a huge failure. So this may cause you to close your doors. In fact, it is estimated that 90% of startup fail because they run out of money. Now we have securing funding your uh, startup house price. Now this is I want to uh, show to the young people that this house price is actually uh, very important why most of the people don't know this. Now this house price is actually being organized by Bill Clinton. So the Bill Clinton organization, they have set, come up with house price that every year, if you have uh, any kind of idea or any kind of inno innovation, you can actually take part in Hulse Prize. So when you take part in Hulse Prize, if your uh, startup, they like it very much, they are going to invest in you towards a, a huge amount of money. So Hulse Prize, uh, they have always, they have a certain kind of uh, they got theme towards it. So they are going to invest in Hulse Prize if you are being able to meet their any kind of startup and your startup, they are going to finance it. So Blin Clinton has, has the organization, organizes first prize every year all around the world. So it's a good opportunity actually for the young people if they have an idea and they don't know where to fund it, they can go and join in such kind of like uh, competitions which is going to get secure if you win. Second, we have surround yourself with right people. Now, this surround yourself with right people. So there can be a lot of risks in starting a business. That's why we will need essential business advisors to help guide us along the way. Like we have attorneys, we have certified public accountant, insurance professionals, banker. Building the right startup team is especially important in the early stages of small businesses. This means we will want to carefully select your co-founder, contractor, initial employees, including remote workers. Why finding the right people is very important for everyone because in most of the time what happens, there might come a case where your co-founders is going to abandon you. So when your co-founders is going to desert you, then automatically every kind of thing is going to fall, will fall into Instead of falling into face, it is going to break you. So choosing the right kind of people, making sure keeping all your legal documents is very important for finding a uh, starting of a uh, startup because there are cases where the co-founder is going to leave at some point of time. 
Now we have make sure that we are following all the legal steps, which is another important thing. Now for any kind of startup, forget about being a startup. Even if you want to have a certain kind of job, we need to have a trade license or a business license. Otherwise, you are going to pay a very hefty amount of fine in your life. So same thing here for designing your product, setting up your workplace, fulfilling your dream. Startup can be a lot of fun, but before you financially enter the market, you will want to take the legal right step to give you the best chance of success, including applying for a business license. So for every kind of uh, like shop that we are going to open, forget about startup, we are going to have a limited amount of business license. Otherwise, we have to pay a hefty amount of fund, uh, fund or it will be considered as illegal, right? Or invalid. Registering your business name, getting a federal tax ID number, filling for a trademark, creating a separate bank account, familiarizing yourself with industry regulation, building contract for clients and others you pl we plan to work with. Second, we have established a location. So in order to for a startup, first we see that without location, we cannot have the, like, we cannot, uh, it will be a very difficult because we need to find a certain kind of property where we are going to operate a startup. Now there are two kinds. Now we have physical and online. For example, uh, Nika do not have, they started their startup through online. They came to like uh, offline mode very much later and that too only five or three stores have been opened in, if, my, if I'm not wrong, four or three stores have been opened in a physical manner in Nika. So initially Nika was a brand which was a startup for only the online platform but later they have gone for physical and before going to physical we need to set up an office. So if we need to set up an office that means we need to uh, look after property. So whether you need to establish a manufacturing facility, set up an office space or open a storefront. You'll want to determine if leasing or buying a property is right for us. In many cases, you can get tax deduction for managing a commercial space, which is a benefit to owning your own place. You'll also be able to rent it out to make extra income. In today's digital era, it is important to set up an online presence and e-commerce platform. In, in fact, you'll have a trouble being su successful without it. This is because customers are increasingly shopping online using Google to find out more information on your product. On top of this, websites offer advantages like now in the digitalized age, so Sarah, if you are dreaming of starting up a startup, so we cannot avoid the online one. Because online is a platform where everyone uh, gets connected globally. So your product sitting in India here, you can uh, launch your product or you can advertise your product in any corner of the entire world. In that manner, what happens is that our product, if you're going for product or you're going for any kind of stuff uh, related to your startup, it is going to reach you. How it is going to reach up? Reach the audience only through the online platform. So online marketing is very successful uh, chain. That is why we should have physical and also online because people nowadays have them because online is the only way which can connect the people through entirely uh, open corner of the world. So keeping your store open here. Another advantage is that we can in offline what happens that here the store has a certain amount of time. For example, 9 a.m. to at least 4 p.m. or 10 a.m. But in online 24 hours, the people can search for your product, right? 24 hours, be it 2 a.m. or 1 a.m. or 3 a.m. So this actually gives you advantage of full access of your product 24 hours a day if you are going for an online platform. Helping you reach customers around the world, yeah. According to online, just like I have told that, we can actually reach the, not only the targeted, audience we can inside the village anywhere because since now telecommunication company has have a happy that you can actually get your network in and around if you have seen the element advertisement it says that you can get your network any corner of the world so if you have network you have internet access and 24 hour of internet access and through it you can be able to reach your customers or all around the world Allowing customers to read reviews about your product, which can raise your brand's credibility. You can enhance your online presence even more by starting a blog. This can help you establish yourself as an expert in your field. You can use search engine optimization to increase your brand's visibility to Google search. 
and it's always a good idea to post on social media platform where your audience visits frequently so today's age is a age of influencer so you can also your think if there are different kinds of influencers on um, social networking platforms so with the help of influencer you can actually enhance your product because you can see that paid partnership is given for your certain kind of product and influencer is going to promote your product so Now, next we have number 10 point developing a marketing plan. So every kind of startup that has reached successful have a marketing Develop number seven point is developing a marketing series. So you see all this, you know, uh, like uh, startup, the hype, Paytm, Bajus, Oyo, Oda, Swiggy, and Big Basket. Now, these are one of the India's most of startup companies. Now, without the developing plan, marketing plan, you are not going to have success. It is because if you're going to have startup, and what everybody needs is that your uh, uh, you have to enter the market. Now, Hike has entered the market. It was one of the competitors with Facebook, Instagram, etc. But Hike is slowly losing its market nowadays. Because in the market of social media, there are so many. One of the most famous downfall of marketing plan was your uh, Orkut. So Orkut came in the area where there was no Facebook, no Instagram. And like, uh, way before uh, uh, Facebook was not famous at the time when actually Orkut was reaching its height. Now, Facebook has become so much famous that Orkut has to shut down the company. It is not in the marketing. Why? Why this failures have hit? Because they don't have a proper marketing plan. Now, every startup needs to spend different amounts of money and time on marketing. This marketing is costly. Even advertisement, giving advertisement on paper to cost you uh, quite a amount of money. It is an important expense because it helps, uh, helps you establish your brand identity, stand out from competition, Create customer relationship and build loyalty. Increase visibility, which attracts new customers, strengthen your company's reputation. Now, one of the most marketing skills, if you see, uh, Allen Institute, which is in Guwahati, right? Because they have developed a marketing plan. And their marketing plan is that the student of Allen has to wear the Allen clothes, they have to buy uniforms according to Allen. They have to, even the umbrellas which is given by the Allen, they have to use those umbrellas. So, it's also by giving them everything, it's like they are actually marketizing their own coaching institute. Because if you see the students, they are going to have uh, more books given by them, even they are going to have like five student Allen. Uh, then and even they are going to have the umbrella which is written by them, right? So this is their marketing plan. 
So without establishing the like uh, standard, we should just say that say that Orkut actually was a very upcoming uh, like upcoming social site network because it used to use ten years back, but just stood out from the competition because it could not sustain its marketing plan for a longer period of time. Same thing you have Baidu's is a learning app. So here advertisement, if you see in ads, pop up ads in YouTube, Baidu is now is a leading company in terms of ad business. So now because of their own marketing plan, increase visibility which attracts new customers, strengthen your company's reputation. So now the company's reputation among all the India startup is now high. Has actually stood out from the competition slowly, and Baidu, Swiggy, and Oreo and Ola is rising up. Now we have build a customer base for your startup business. You have long term success. You want to build a customer base. This loyal customers can help you with boosting your sales because you are willing to keep spending at your company, sending a message to new customers that your brand is just worthy, gaining referrals which saves you saves you time. And afford with finding new customers. Some ways you can attract and retain customers include regularly offering our great product or services, launching loyalty programs to keep them coming in. Now you see regularly offering our great product or services. Amazon has done a excellent job in offering our great product or services. For example, if you are going to buy Amazon Prime, what is going to happen is that you are going to get your delivery in one day or two day very fast. Then they have maintained not only they are uh, attracting the customers to buy Amazon Prime, uh, they are also attracting the customers that your delivery we are going to deliver it in within one four days with Amazon Prime. So Amazon Prime has is actually doing a job of two uh, with their one criteria that we are going to if you have if you buy Prime. We are going to give the product in one day or next day delivery. Launching loyalty program to keep them coming in. Not changing your product, right? Over the years, you see, not changing the uh, hardware or the software. Now there are many uh, tech companies which are rising. All they are having loyalty programs. They are not changing anything. Using affiliate marketing or social media, which involves paying influencer to promote products to your target audience. Like I have told you, influencer is the best way now this in order to promote any kind of products that you want because this is an age of influencer friendly. Focusing on great, uh, great customer services now. Great customer services, for example, Indigo is one most type which actually do not compromise with time. So there are other flights which came into market, but they have got because of their not uh, great customer services. So Indigo is a flight. Even if you delay it for one hour, one hour, they are going to make up the time. From the time Indigo has entered into the market till now, they one thing that is being constant is their time. They do not compromise with their time. So they are going to lead the passengers safely according to their time, and this is called consistency. If in our startup we are thinking about building up a startup, if we don't have consistency, then our startup is going to decline. We are going to go out from the market. Using market research to understand your customers' expectations better. So any product uh, that is being launched, or any startup which are going to launch a certain kind of product, first and foremost, we have to understand the customers' requirement. Only when we can uh, do a survey of customer requirement, that what are the things that are being required for the customers, or is our customers only the target customers? If it is the target customers, then what are the things that we should be concerned of? Based on this, we can it can help us in a marketing skill, and it can also help us reaching our audience. Asking for feedback directly from the customer, and any kind of be it startup or be it institution, feedback is very important because according to the feedback, we are going to work on that. Lastly, which is we have planned to change, okay. being consistent, being changing. Now every day, day to day, we need to change the trend. Now, if you don't remain consistent, if you don't adapt to the current uh, scenario, what is going to happen? Our market is going to lose. So startup change drastically within their few years in operation. Our key to success is to evolve and adapt to business model to a marketing industry. So <clears throat> the demand. Now everything runs on demand and supply. 
so the demand of the if the demand of the audience come into play then only we can have to uh, uh, like uh, evolve evolve this also we are going to do that is why uh, there are lots of smartphone companies which has come into the market right now lots of companies have uh, like uh, start up lots of mobile has gone in <coughs> dry why companies mobile have gone dry why because one factor they have not evolved now there are for example chinese phones they actually evolved for rate which is actually demanding satisfying the thirst of the customers any kind of phones so some strategies to make sure you are prepared to adapt are highly forward thinkers so you know your team is adaptable so once the uh, in the market nokia it was uh, used in the market so after a certain time because we have uh, seen that this thing that they are going to give the good battery power back so if you still think about nokia right now what does it comes to your mind the only thing that comes to mind is a good the memories that we have with nokia is that nokia gives a good uh, uh, like a backup back to our battery for three days for one day now <clears throat> what happened to nokia then so lots of other competitors in the field of telecommunications have come into being so when they come into being they have uh, come with new upgraded feature some phones are giving the uh, like uh, camera like iphone so it is the only way to attract the customers how by evolving and adapting to the change in the environment that means we have to uh, have a good knowledge about the market what is going on what are the needs of the customers that is why survey forms are very important listening to feedback from customers suppliers and others that we work with staying updated on trends in our industry now changing the trend is very important what we need in our phones nowadays nowadays everybody needs a phone with a good camera right so that is why all the other phones are are, are being updated their camera so people are focusing for example oppo is only focusing on the camera so like uh, as such they have seen that the need for a good quality camera is increasing so that is why in the market if you see now this features have come that at small prices they are giving a very good camera which was not a necessity 10 years back because 10 years back we used to run in small cameras with a very low like megapixel but now the demand of camera has increased so that is called changing in trend so staying updated on trends trends in our industry is very important for a successful startup now the next will be said by nachi uh, by nikki ma'am okay, next one so one of the we are uh, like most uh, successful like uh, startup which was seen by uh, like the startup of oreo the story of oreo how he this one idea has literally changed the entire scenario like the idea slogan has uh, said that an idea can change of the entire world so you see he started this company in 2013 uh, from the ritesh agarwal industry hospital group which was promoted to oreo and now his current valuation is 16 billion dollar so ritesh agarwal is the founder of unicorn startup oreo has made oreo one of the largest hotel chain in the world so he saw that most of the hotels were actually lying <coughs> just like that with no renovation nothing so what he did is that he buy all the hotels that they currently operate in more than 800 urban areas across countries like india china brazil japan united states and 80 plus in more airbnb was a british motivation for british agarwal who began his journey as a traveler and when he found a huge problem in the hotels he took it as an opportunity to become an entrepreneur by solving of the problem like in the beginning i have told that starting with an idea we need to find a problem what are the problem and for the problem we are going to find a solution and if we find a solution that's where the idea is going to generate from so the next slide will be told by uh, nikki ma'am <coughs> Thank you, Jennifer Ma'am, for discussing our startup in such a good way. I hope you will learn. So next, uh, about the, the legal and ethical steps of startup. So in this chapter, what the objectives are? Discuss the actions founders can take to establish a strong ethical culture in their entrepreneurial ventures. So how they can establish an ethical culture? 
in their new entrepreneurship business. Next is described actions taken in new firms to effectively deal with legal issues. So what are the legal issues a firm can face and what, how they can deal with it. Next is provide an overview of the business license and permits that a startup must obtain before it begins operating. So before we start anything, we should have the license of that business and permit. Then only we can do a startup. Next, the last of these uh, objectives are identify and describe the different forms of organization available to new firms. So next we have initial ethical and legal issues facing a new firm. So what are the issues that can a new firm face? First is establishing a strong ethical culture. So whenever we do startup, we should have a strong ethical culture. Choosing an attorney, we must choose an attorney for the startup. Then drafting a founder's agreement. Agreement that part the permission we must take before a startup, avoiding legal disputes, obtaining business license and permits, choosing a form of business organization. So these are the six initial ethical and legal issues that will be faced by a new firm. So establishing a strong ethical culture. So lead by example, the most important thing that any entrepreneur or team of entrepreneurs can do to build a strong ethical culture in their organization is to lead by example. So next is establish a code of conduct. A code of conduct or code of ethics is a formal statement of an organization values on certain ethical social issues. So an organization or an organization must have a code of conduct, which is also known as code of ethics, must have as a formal statement for on certain ethical and social issues. So if they are facing any ethical and social issues, they must have a code of ethics or code of conduct of their own. Next is implement an ethics training program. Ethics training programs teach business ethics to help employees deal with ethical dilemmas and improve their overall ethical conduct. Next, an ethical dilemma is a situation that involves doing something that is beneficial to oneself or the organization, but may be unethical. So, the ethical training, it might, we should implement in our programs, like uh, ethics training programs, which teaches, teaches us business ethics, which will help the employees to deal with ethical dilemmas, so ethical dilemmas are ethical problems and improve their overall ethical conduct. So if they will have an ethical training program, they can deal with the ethical dilemmas and then improve their ethical conduct. Next is potential payoffs for establishing a strong ethical culture. So strong ethical culture can be covered by Potential avoidance of funds, better accept access to capital, improve brand reputation, improve employee commitment, improve customer loyalty, decrease vulnerability. So these are the six steps for potential payoffs for establishing a strong ethical culture. Means uh, better access to capital, we must access to better capital, improve brand reputation. So if the brand reputation is good, then there will be a strong ethical culture. Next is improve employee commitment, improve customer loyalty. We should be very loyal with the customer. Then only, uh, if we are loyal with the customer, then only our brand will be reputed. Then improved uh, employee commitment. Employees should be there from the beginning of the new form so that they can commit it to that uh, new uh, to the construction order from farm. So next is decreased vulnerability. Choosing an attorney for a farm. 
Select an attorney early. It is important for an entrepreneur to select an attorney as early as possible when developing a business venture. It is critically important that the attorney be familiar with startup issues. So whenever we are going for a new firm, we must select an attorney early. It is important for any interim entrepreneur, whoever is going to start up anything, to select an attorney as early as possible before, whenever they are going to plan to start a business venture. It is critically important that the attorney be familiar with startup issues. Next, intellectual property for issues dealing with intellectual property patterns, trademarks, copyrights, and trade secrets. It is essential to use an attorney who specializes in this field. Intellectual property means wherever we are starting any startup, we must have our own trademark, our own patterns. We don't have to copy anything because there is a copyright issue if you copy anything. So this should be done who are specializes in this field. Next is how to select an attorney. Contact the local bar association and ask for a list of attorneys who specialize in startups in your area. Select an attorney who is familiar with the startup process. Select an attorney who can assist you in raising money for your new venture. Make sure your attorney has a track record of completing his or her work on time. Talk about fees. Select an attorney that you understand team understands your business. Learn as much about the process of starting a business yourself as possible. So these are the steps how to select an attorney. At, at the very beginning, we have to contact with local bar association and ask for a list of attorneys who are specializing startups in our area. In, in the area we are going to start our business venture, we should contact the local bar association of that area and ask for a list of attorneys who have specialized in startups in that area. Interview several attorneys. Here, we don't have to go for but just one attorney. We have to interview several attorneys, then only we select one. And we have to select an attorney who is familiar with the startup process. We just go to anywhere. We have to see if they are familiar with that process or not. Then an attorney who can help in raising money for a new firm. Then make sure your attorney has a track record of completing his or her work on time. Talk about the fees, then that attorney should understand your business also. Then only they can raise money for your new ventures. Learn as much about the process of starting business yourself as possible. Talking of founders agreement, founders agreement, a founders agreement or shareholders agreement is a written document that deals with issues such as the relative split of the equity among the founders of the firm, how individual founders will be compensated for the cash or the sweet equity they put into the firm and how long the founders will have to remain with the firm for the shares to fully pay. The items to include in the founders agreement are shown in the following slide. So in the draft, how to adopt the founders agreement, what are the main thing we have to see is the after the founders agreement is also known as the shareholders agreement. And the written document that deals with the issues of the related split of the equity among the founders of the firm and how can individual founders will be compensated for the cash, which is also known as the sweet equity. They put into the firm as a as a uh, investment they do, and how long the founders will have to remain with that associated with that firm for their shares to fully face. So the items which includes in a founder agreement are shown in the next slide. So partial list of items to include in a founders agreement. So what are the list that we can include in a founders agreement? Nature of the prospective business, identify and propose titles of the founders, legal form of business ownership, apportment of stock or division of ownership, 
consideration paid for stock or ownership share of each of the founders, identification of any intellectual property signed over to the business, description of how the founders will be compensated and how the profits in the business will be divided, provisions of resolving disputes, buyback clause. So these are the uh, partial lease of the founders agreement. So we must have to see that legal form of our business ownership. We must have the legal form and to identify and propose the title of the founders. And that nature of what is the nature of the business we are going to start. Then uh, identification of intellectual property, it is a patent or trademark over the business. We have the provision of media maybe disputes. So we have provision, we should have provisions for resolving that disputes. And then next is the description of how the founders will be compensated and how and with the return profits they will gain. The founders, the profits, how will they divide among themselves? And next is the buyback clause. So next is avoiding legal disputes. Avoiding legal disputes. Most legal disputes are the result of misunderstanding, copyness, or a simple lack of knowledge of the law. Getting worked down in legal disputes is something, is something an entrepreneur should work hard to avoid. There are several steps that an entrepreneur can take to avoid legal disputes. Meet all contractual obligations, avoid <clears throat> undercapitalization, get everything in writing, set standards. So there may be legal disputes, but an entrepreneur should try as much as possible to avoid such legal disputes. Most of the legal disputes, uh, disputes why they arise? Because of misunderstanding or lack of knowledge of that law. So there are several steps that can, an entrepreneur can try to avoid their legal dispute, uh, disputes that meet all contractual obligations, avoid undercapitalization, get every kind of standard. There should be standard, there should be the maintain a standard in that business, or they should get everything in writing format to have a record. So there is a contract. The first step is then avoiding legal disputes is contracts. Although it's tempting to try to show people you trust them by not insisting on written agreement, it's not a good practice. One of the simplest ways to avoid misunderstandings and ultimately legal dispute is to get everything in writing. So we may trust someone and may not get, uh, have the writing agreements, but it's not a good practice. Before we start anything with someone or have a, a connection, we must have everything in writing format. So that in future, if a legal dispute arises, we may have a record of that. Non-disclosure and non-compete agreements. Legal agreements that many firms ask their employees to sign. A non-disclosure agreement binds an employee or other parties such as a sub supplier to not disclosure a company's trade secrets. So non-disclosure agreement means uh, we don't have to disclose anything in that the agreement which you are signing, we don't disclose that. that uh, Maybe an employee or other party like a supplier, which we do with the employee or with the supplier, do not disclose a company's trade secrets. A non-compete agreement prevents an individual from competing against the former employee for a specific period of time. So a non-compete ag agreement means uh, which prevents an individual its main function, a non-compete agreement main function, is to prevent uh, an individual from competing against a former employer for a specific period of time. Obtaining business license and permits. Business license and permits, depending on the nature of the business, the business may need local, state, or federal license and permits to 
operate. So how to obtain that business license and uh, permits? It depends mainly on the nature of the business and what business we are doing. It, if, depending on that, it may have, it may be solved by local permission, state permission, and a federal license and permits to operate. So next is, what is federal license and permits? Most uh, business do not require a federal license to operate, but some do. Examples of business that require federal license and of permits to operate include uh, business that sell or provide alcohol, tobacco, firearms, animal transport uh, across state lines, commercial fisheries, and radio and television broadcasting. So, as we all know, the, what is federal license and permits? Most business, we do not need a federal license to operate, but some do. So, examples of business that require federal license and a permits to operate include business that sell or provide alcohol, tobacco, firearms, animal transport across state lines, commercial fisheries, and radio and television broadcasting. So these are two examples of business which requires federal license and permits. Next is state license. And permits. So in most states, there are three different categories of license and permits that you may need to operate a business. Business, so state license, but what, what state license and permits that includes? Business registration requirements. Some states require all new business to register with the state. Sales tax permits. Most states and communities require business that sell goods and in some cases services to collect sales tax and submit the tax to proper state authorities. Professional and occupational license and permits. In all states, there are laws that require people in certain professions to pass a state exam and maintain a professional license to conduct business. Examples include barbers, nurses, and real estate agents. So, these are few the uh, three categories which includes uh, whenever we go for a state license and permit. So, what are the business registration requirements, sales tax permit? Sales tax permits is like we collect the sales tax and submit the same to the proper channel of state authorities. This professional and occupational license this includes that nurses, barbers, where they require people in certain professions to pass a state exam and maintain a professional license to conduct that business. Next is local license and permits. On the local level, there are two categories of license and permits that may be needed. So the first is to operate certain type of business, include childcare, barber shop, and saloons, hotels, etc. So second category is permit for engaging in certain type of activities, which includes example building permit. Required if you are building or remodeling, health permit normally required if you are involved in preparing food, and signage permit may be required to erect a sign. So this uh, two point is required for local license and permission. The two categories, which is first is to operate a certain type of business. So this uh, examples like childcare, barber shops, saloons, automotive repair, and hotels. It is uh, which require certain type of business. These are local license and permit. The next category which required is that uh, building permit. Signage permit. So these are the few uh, two categories which requires a local uh, license and permit. 
Next, we have few additional requirements. If you plan to use a fictitious name for a business, in most cases, you will need to obtain a fictitious business name permit, also called a DBA or doing business as. A fictitious name permit allows a business to operate under a fictitious name like Gold for Seafood or Red Rock Bakery. So if we are uh, going for a fictitious name for our business, in most cases, a fictitious based uh, permit, which is also known as DBA or doing business as, will come under an additional requirements. So the few examples are given in that fictitious name are Gold Coast Seafood or Red Rock Bakery. So all business other than sole proprietorships that do not have employees are required to obtain a federal employee identification number also called as EIN. So this uh, all business other than sole proprietorship that do not have employees, they are mostly required to obtain a license or an identification number which is known as Federal Employee Identification Number. So, and the easiest way to obtain this number is go to EIN, that is a website, www.is.com, and click on Apply for EIN Online. Choosing a form of business ownership. So whenever a business is launched, a form of legal entity must be chosen. The most common legal entities are sole proprietorship, partnership, limited liability company, corporation. So these are the four most common legal entities. When a business is launched, a form of legal entity must be so chosen. So these are the four. Sole proprietorship, partnership, limited liability company, Corporation. Issues to consider in choosing a legal form of business ownership. So there are issues we consider in choosing whenever we choose a legal form in our business ownership. The cost of setting up and maintaining the legal form. The extent to which personal assets can be shielded from the liabilities of the business. Tax consideration the number and type of investors involved. So issues uh, in, in the legal form, what the business ownership should uh, see the points, that the cost and setting, that the cost they are setting up in the legal form and how they are maintaining. That to extent how their personal assets can be shielded also the liabilities of the business. Next is tax consideration. The last one is the number and the type of investment the investors are involved in that business. Next is sole proprietorship. The simplest form of business entity is the sole proprietorship. A sole, a sole proprietorship is a form of business organization involving one person and the person and the business are essentially the same. A sole proprietorship is not a separate legal entity. The sole proprietor is the responsible for all the liabilities of the business and this is a significant drawback. So these are the three points for the sole proprietorship. Advantages and disadvantages we should see in a sole proprietorship. So what first we see the advantages. Creating one is easy and inexpensive. The owner maintains complete control of the business and retains all of the profits. Business losses can be deducted against the sole proprietor's other sources of income. It is not subject to double taxation. The business is easy to dissolve. So these are the few uh, advantages of uh, having a sole proprietorship. So that in a, whenever we create a sole proprietorship, it is easy and uh, inexpensive. And the, we are the owner of that proprietorship completes control, uh, gives a complete control of the business and retains all profits. If there is loss also, 
that can be deducted against the sole proprietor other's business other source of income it is not subject to double taxation and if there is a dispute also it is easy in that business it is easy to dissolve and the uh, disadvantages of a sole proprietorship liability of the owner's part is unlimited the business relies on the skills and the abilities of a single owner to be successful of course the owner can hire employees who have education additional skills and abilities raising capital can be difficult the business ends at the owner's date or loss of interest in the business the liquidity of the owner's business investment is low so these are the few disadvantages of a sole proprietorship raising capital can be very difficult like uh, the business relies on the skill and abilities of a single handed person if he may hire some employee but mainly depends on single the business ends at the owner's death or loss of interest in the business partnerships if two or more people start a business they must organize as a partnership corporation or a limited liability company partnerships are organized as either general or limited liability partnerships general partnerships a form of business organization with two or more people pool their skills abilities and resources to run a business the primary disadvantage is that all partners are liable for the partnership's debts and obligations limited partnership a modified form of general partnership the major difference between the two is that partnership includes two classes of owners general partners and limited partners the general partners are liable for the debts and obligations of the partnership but the limited partners are only liable to amount of their investment so the main difference the part in partnership there are two types of partnership general and limited and the main difference of these two are general partners are liable for the debts and obligations of the partnership but the limited partners are only liable up to the amount of their investment advantages of a general partnership creating one is relatively easy and inexpensive compared to a corporation or limited liability company the skills and abilities of more than one individual are available to the firm having more than one owner may make it easier to raise funds business losses can be deducted against the partners other sources of income it is not subject to double taxation so these are the few advantage of a general partnership disadvantages of a partnership liability on the part of each general partner is unlimited the business relies on the skills and abilities of a fixed number of partners of course the owners can hire employees who have additional skills and abilities raising capital can be difficult because decision making among the partners is shared disagreements can occur the business ends with the date or withdrawal of one partner unless other stated in the partnership agreement the liquidity of each partner's investment is low so these are the few disadvantages of partnership corporation a corporation is a separate legal entity organized under the authority of a state corporations are organized as either c corporations or sub chapter s corporations c corporation are what people think of one when they hear the word corporation however business startups are often organized as sub chapter s corporation so in a corporation we have two the type c and s so in c corporation are what most people think of when they hear the word corporation but in business startups are often organized as sub chapter s corporations c corporation is a separate legal entity that in the eyes of the law is separate from its owners in most cases a corporation shields its owners who are called shareholders from personal liability for the debts of the corporation a corporation is governed by a board of directors which is elect 
elected by the shareholders a corporation is formed by filling articles of incorporation next is c corporation a corporation is takes as a separate legal entity the disadvantages of a c corporation is that it is subject to double taxation this means that the corporation is taxed on its net income and when the same income is distributed to shareholders in the form of dividends the income is taxed again on the shareholders personal tax returns <clears throat> so the main disadvantages in a c corporation is that it is subject to double taxation this means a corporation in c corporation on its net income a tax is deducted and again when the shareholders they in distributed their profit then also a personal tax return is imposed on c corporation advantages of c corporation owners are liable only for the debts and obligations of the corporation up to the amount of their investment the mechanics of raising capital is easier no restriction exists on the number of shareholders which differs from sub chapter s corporation stock is liquid if traded on a major stock exchange the ability to share stock with employees through stock options or other incentive plans can be a powerful form of employment motivation so these are the few advantages of a c corporation these advantages of a c corporation setting up and maintaining one is more difficult than for a sole proprietorship or a partnership business losses cannot be deducted against the shareholders other source of income income is subject to double taxation meaning that it is taxed at the corporate and the shareholder level small shareholders typically have little voice in the management of the farm so main disadvantage as we consider in a c tax c corporation is that a double taxation is imposed double taxation on the net income and the profit that is there divided among the shareholders sub chapter s corporation combines the advantages of a partnership and a c corporation is similar to a partnership in that the income of the business is not subject to double taxation and is similar to a corporation in that the owners are not subject to personal liability for the debts or behavior of the business a sub chapter s corporation does not pay taxes profits and losses are passed through the tax return of the owners limited liability company it is a form of business ownership that is rapidly gaining popularity in the us along with the sub chapter s it is a popular choice for startup farms the limited liability company combines the limited liability advantage of the corporation with the tax advantage of a partnership a limited liability company does not pay taxes profits and losses are passed to a tax return of the owners so these are the few advantages of a limited liability company advantages uh, it also includes that number of shareholder is unlimited because profits are taxed only at the shareholder level there is no in limited liability company as we can see no double taxation is imposed on them the main disadvantage is tax accounting can be complicated some of the regulations governing very by the state some states levy a franchise tax which essentially a fee pay the state for the benefit of the limited liability so these are the few disadvantages of a limited liability company so thank you uh, next uh, we we'll, next will be proceed by an election ma'am so what do you mean by ethical decision so ethical decision making process it is the process of choosing the best alternative for achieving the best result or outcome with individual and social issues moral and regulations so making good ethical decision to solve ethical dilemma 
requires a pain sensitivity to ethical issues and a practice method of exploring the ethical aspects of a decision. Having a good uh, method for ethical decision making is absolutely essential. It is most essential to make the ethical decision first. So ethical decision should be based on ethical principles and codes regarding emotion, thoughts, and fixed policies. So what is the term ethical dilemma means? So ethical dilemma, it is a situation which uncertainty about what is right to do from a moral or ethical perspective. For example, you can say a manager of a company may be put in a position in which he must choose between the interest of his employers and his employees. A new technology is being launched, which is good for the company as well as customers. But if this is brought into use, a major manpower is required for the organization. The entrepreneur is now an ethical dilemma whether he wants to better his clients with good services or be loyal to his employees who have and help to grow the company. So these are the nine steps. So first step is this. First of all, we have to describe the problem. The secondly, determine whether it is an ethical issue or an ethical dilemma. Thirdly, we have to identify and rank the key values and principles. Four, we have to gather the more information. Fifth, review any applicable code of ethics. Then sixth, uh, determine the option. Seven, select a course of action. Eight, put your plan into action. And number nine, evaluate the result. The first one is we to describe the problem. You must first describe the problem and ensure that it's actually a moral dilemma that needs to follow an ethical model. Consider the nature of the problem. Then you have to see what type of problem it is and any signs of problem and ensure that you are attempting to solve the issue and not just its sign. Next one, circumstances affect the problem definition. For whom does the problem exist and what is the surrounding? Step number two, determine whether it is an ethical dilemma. The dilemma becomes ethical when the good or bad options seem to have a moral component. For example, privacy versus avoidance of harm, freedom versus safety. Term of an ethical dilemma must be ethical in nature, not legal. If something is a law, you then have the ethical choice to follow the law or not. The third step is identify and rank the key values and principles. So what reason do you provide for prioritizing one's competing value over another? Understanding what a decision for a dilemma which goes against an individual person's set of values has very little chance of change. Number four, better more information. Do you do you have all the known facts? Do you understand the applicable laws or uh, legalities? Do you have all relevant policies available to review? Are you clear about the individual views and personal values? Don't hesitate to seek out consultation. Step number five, review the applicable code of ethics. So firstly, we have to see the mission statement, values base of the organization, ethical principles to guide practice, ethical standards. Goals can be revised. We have to use the code which is updated as needed. And step number six, determine the option. List all possible action options. Weight the cost benefits of these options. Seek out additional points of view. Step number seven, select the course of them. Remove the least desirable options. Remove any which you can put into action. Remove any options which break the value system of those affected. Recognize that your final choice will be impacted by your personal values. Uh, recognize that your final choice will be impacted by your personal values. Step number nine, evaluate the result. Evaluate the cost of each person involved, client, family members, workers, etc. Consider submitting your most difficult cases to an ethic review board for feedback. 
for some ethical decision making approaches. First one is utilitarian approaches. Moral behavior produces the greatest good for the greatest number. Number two, individualism approach. Acts are moral when they promote the individual based on interest, which ultimately leads to the greater good. Third, moral approach. Right approaches are those that best maintain the rights of those people affected by them. And fourth number is justice approach. More moral decision must be based on standard of equity, fairness, and impartiality. Decision making situation. These are some of the situations. First one is uh, personal decision making. It is a part of our everyday life. Secondly, clinical decision making relates to quality of care and competency issues. Organizational decision making is choosing option directed towards the resolution of organization problem and the achievement of goals. The decision is very important when understanding its context. First, clear, clarify the decision. Make sure everyone has the same understanding on what is being decided. Secondly, categorical interpretation. The problem should be defined properly. Next, adequate information. More quantity of information leads to effective decision making. If you do not have en enough information, it can feel like you are making a decision without any basis. Then lastly, timeliness. Decision making should be at a proper time to meet the competitive advantages. Takes plenty of time to make the decisions, gathering considerable information and analyzing several alternatives. Who is responsible for creating ethics in an organization? A company's manager plays an important role in establishing its ethical tone. If manager behaves as if the only thing that matters is profit, employees are likely to act in a like manner. A company's leader are responsible for setting standards for what is and is not acceptable for employees' behavior. It plays it's vital for managers to play an active role in creating a working environment where employees are encouraged and rewarded for acting in an ethical manner. Importance of business ethics. The first important is public expects business to exceed high levels of ethical performance and social responsibility. Secondly, encouraging business funds and their employees to behave ethically as is to prevent harm to society. Promoting ethical behavior is to protect business from abuse by unethical employees or unethical competitors. And high ethical performance also protects the individual who work in business. There are some principles of admirable business ethics. First one is leadership. The conscious effort to adapt, integrate, and evaluate the other 11 principles to guide decisions and behaviors in all aspects of professional and personal life. Next, accounting. Holding yourself and others responsible for your actions. Commitment to the following ethical practice and ensure other follow ethics guidelines. Integrity. Incorrupts other principle, honesty, trustworthiness, and reliability. Someone with integrity consistently does the right thing and strive to hold themselves to a higher standard. Next one, respect for others. To foster ethical behavior and environment in the workplace, respecting others is a critical component. Everyone deserves dignity, privacy, equality, opportunity, completion, and empathy. Honesty. Truth in all matter is key to fostering an ethical climate. Partial truth, omissions, and under or understating don't help a business improve its performance. Bad news should be communicated and received in the same manner as good news so, so that solution can be developed. And lastly, respect for laws. Ethical leadership should include enforcing all local, state, and federal laws. If there is a legal gray area, leaders should be on the side of legality rather than exploiting of them. Next one, responsibility. Promote ownership within an organization. Allow employees to be responsible for their work and be accountable for yours. 
transparency stakeholders are people with an interest in a business such as stakeholder employs the community a firm offers in and the family members of the employees without trade secrets and companies should ensure information about the financial price changing hiring and hiring practices next one is competition employs the the community surrounding a business business partner and customer should be treated with concern for their well-being next one fairness everyone should have the same opportunity and be treated the same if a practice or behavior should make you feel comfortable or place personal or corporate benefit in form of equality or <coughs> loyalty leadership should demonstrate confidentiality and commitment to their employees and the company environmental concern in a world where resources are limited ecosystem have been damaged by past practices and the climate is changing it is the utmost importance to be aware of so conclusion ethics are important not only in business but in also aspects of life because it is an essential part of the foundation in which of the civilized society is built a business or society that lacks ethical principle is bound to fail sooner or later so ethics is a guiding principle that influences a positive outcome through our decisions and actions ethics helps us tell right from wrong good from bad it gives practical guidance to our lives in many cases ethical regulates our way of living and helps us live in a society with peace and harmony with other ethics is what defines us as human so here we are ending our session so i hope that um, this session was really helpful for you all so thank you everyone thank you for joining so now we are ending our session here so now we are ending our session here i hope that this session was really helpful for you all so thank you everyone thanks for joining